Hello guys. All right. I just want to shoot this short video because we just released a very exciting new update to Schema Writer, where you now have the opportunity to define what URLs that you want to scrape when you're producing your report, and you can enter up to 10 URLs. And this is an extremely exciting update that I've been looking forward to. And so the auto setting, it scrapes the top 10 search results and the custom setting, well, it's up to you who you want to scrape. And the reason that we introduced this update is, let's say that I want to tune my web page for web page schema, for example. And as I mentioned just a couple of seconds earlier in this video, when I make a report using the default setting in uh, the auto setting in schema writer. What it does is that it searches Google for web page schema, then it scrapes the top 10 web pages in um, the country that you are living in or that you defined. And it will then uh, return all the entities that it finds and all the keywords that it finds, the Yake keywords. But when I search for web page schema, it's very apparent that uh, number one is schema.org, which is obvious because they contain the actual definition of what is web page schema. And then endings and Google and Abrago, SEMrush, schema.org again, and so on and so forth. So you can already see that this web page and the Google web page and the schema.org web page, they will skew the results obviously for obvious reasons if I uh, set the schema writer to scrape schema.org, this page, I'll get a lot of entities. But it's not because of these entities that this web page is ranking number one. It's because it's schema.org, and I'm optimizing for this. And uh, for uh, and Google is also ranking number three, not because it's uh, actually I didn't click on this. It could be a good text. It also could not be a good text. But uh, they are ranking because they're Google and they have extremely high domain authority, of course, for obvious reasons, because it's Google. So schema.org, extremely high domain rating, uh, domain authority, and Google, extremely high domain authority. That's why they're ranking. And uh, so in this case, for this particular keyword, what I would do is, okay, let's say I want to choose to tune schemawriter.ai, the homepage for web page schema. I would click on inlinks. I would click on Umbago, Izzy Imrush, Daniel, Yoast, and Wordlift. So I would now get the, let's say, one, two, three, four, five, six web pages. And then I'll actually copy these URLs. So let me just go ahead and fill in the report. My target URL is schemawriter.ai and custom. And then I will just uh, copy this. Doot. And I will 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 copy Yoast. And I will copy Word Lift. All right, and my company will of course be Schema Writer, Schema Writer, and country will be United States. That's always what I choose, and I don't touch the auto because it will be English. Uh, so I cl just click uh, generate. So now it's working and it is uh, searching web page schema, and it's it's uh, that's the target keywords. And it will now be scraping these six web pages here. So the selection of entities and the selection of Yake keywords that I will get will be only based on these six pages that I just showed you. <coughs> so, um, and actually, I encourage you to uh, go to Daniel's website because he's extremely knowledgeable about schema. And I've just become a huge fan of this guy. I don't know who he is, but uh, he has also he has an excellent YouTube channel. Also, you should really check up on his YouTube videos if you're a fan of uh, building schema, because he's uh, just a super smart guy. So let me just uh, you know let me just click pause while this is running. All right. So now the 
report has run. So web-based schema just, just click in here. And as you can see, as usual, all the schema has now been produced and it's a lot. So we have the web page schema here. Let me just scroll slowly down web page schema. And we have the local business schema containing the information that I filled in over here in the table company information. We have the product schema or the accredited rating schema. And then we have the FAQ schema and the video object schema and then the organization schema. So um, let me just uh, let me just uh, open here the web page schema and uh, let me show you. No, actually, let me let me start over here on the entities tab because over here on the entities tab, you can see that the on page entities are the entities that has been detected in the home page for um, schema writer, and so this is the home page and. Uh, all of the entities here are the entities that's been um, detected over here. And the competitor entities is a compilation of the entities detected in the uh, six URLs that we defined or that I defined in the beginning of the report. And the entity gap are all the entities that these guys have that I don't have. So point of sale, keyword research, concept, algorithm, and so on and so forth are all entities that they have and that I don't have. So uh, that's what the entity gap is. And then I can just get started uh, adding entities from here. Uh, or yeah, I, I actually, it's probably easiest to actually just add missing entities from here because you can see that the entities that has this red symbol, they, uh, the entity has already been added by the system. Uh, and uh, the entities that has these two buttons two blue buttons here with the plus sign here, they have not been added to the system yet. And considering that the the target keyword is web page schema, keep that in mind when you are optimizing or when you're adding entities to your web page schema, because you don't want to have unrelated entities. Uh, this is not about you know mass spamming uh, entities that are totally unrelated into your web page schema because then you will just confuse the google bot and the google uh, rank brain and all the algorithms that are trying to detect and understand what your web page is about so you really need to take care to actually include the entities that what your page is about but you know considering it's a web page schema I can see that the system chose to include JSON LD. I'm glad for that because it is related. Uh, and it also chose to include blog, artificial intelligence, mathematical optimization, language, computing platform, user computing, and so on and so forth. So right from the get-go, I would probably you know, delete. Uh, I do mention actually artificial intelligence because it's powered by AI to a certain degree, schema writer. So I would keep that, of course, mathematical optimization on our language, uh, user computing platform, Google, go to Wiki, Wiki, WordPress, database, schema technology. Yeah, all these are good. Point of sale, no. Con keyword research. And it is actually about keyword research because we are finding keywords. Concept, no. Algorithm, no, just. Indeed, all these do, 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 do. We already have artificial intelligence. Best practice, no. Yeah, mathematical observation, the same. Unsecured debt, cooking. <laughs> cooking, I don't know why it uh, thinks that cooking is related to web based schema, but that happens sometimes. But anyway, that's the, uh, and let me just click save changes here. So that's the, uh, that's the, practice that I use when I'm optimizing my schema files for entities. And the same thing goes with the on-page keywords. As you know, might or might not know, we do use an advanced algorithm called YAG, yet another keyword extraction algorithm to detect the most relevant keywords that are not entities. So you can see here that uh, schema, well, that's probably actually probably an entity. Let's actually go to so just type in schema, uh, schema topics referred to by the same term. Uh, so there is actually a, there's a small bug here because it detects schema to not be an entity, but I can see that it is an entity. But anyway, 
So uh, you can see here uh, website schema and organization schema. Some of these keywords, they sound like they are entities, but they are not entities. Uh, let's copy this guy here and search. Uh, good. Uh, as you can see, the website schema is not an entity. And that's so that's the thing with these keywords that we do detect here. The on page keywords, again, those are the keywords that we detect on the websites, my website, or schema writer that AI website and the competitor keywords again are the keywords that we detect on all the URLs that I defined in the beginning of the report. So the reason that we include these is because that uh, the YAG algorithm uh, detects these to be statistically important to this um, target keyword that we are trying to tune for. So um, I would do the same it actually added a lot of relevant keywords here and then uh, let's be at wikipedia could also be good and it is schema writer yeah it's 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 the same so optimize schema also sounds like a good software could also be good product schema could be uh good and yeah it could also be good okay so so that's the that's the uh that's the uh, method that I use for keywords also. Let me just click just save changes here. And uh, again, local entities, I probably mentioned it before, but local entities, of course, they are not important. They're not um, for, I mean, for this keyword web page schema, the local entities are not. So I could just go ahead and delete them. Or, I mean, in my case, I'll probably delete them because they're not relevant for my search term. But if you do have a search term that is a local search term, then I would, of course, you, you know, include these local entities in the, to the extent that you think that you as a human being with your SEO brain and your SEO experience that you deem to be important. So these local entities are based on your, on the information that we, that we add in the company information and we are using your physical address and certain APIs, not Google API, not yet, but we're using certain APIs to detect the entities in the nearby vicinity. For example, Jan Utson, he lived in Alpo and Jan Utson was the designer of the, the museum is the Sydney, Sydney Museum. So yeah, so he's um, of course relevant. If I'm, if I was to optimize for a search term that was relevant to where I live in Albo. And so this was the uh, not so short video, but uh, I am guessing that if you're new to Schema Writer, it does probably doesn't hurt to see this more than one time, how I use it and how it's intended to be used. Um, so let's exactly just content. So once again, the content here is the content that I scraped from my websites. And down here is the content that I, or then not me, not my, me personally, but the schema writer produced. So all of this content is the same content that you can find in the FAQ schema. So if I click on this button here on schema, and if I open the FAQ schema, so all of these questions here and their related answer can be found here in the content tab down here. So if you want to include the FAQ schema in the uh, schema files that you place on the web page that you're trying to optimize, then you need to click on this guy, copy HTML, and then you need to place the actual content on the web page. Also, because remember, uh, let me click here, remember that the purpose of schema is marking up existing content existing unstructured content. So when I'm just, when I'm looking at my web page here, all of this is unstructured content. Uh, of course, I made the structure because this is an H2 heading and this is some content in a, in a P tag. But in the sense of schema, it's unstructured, but it becomes structured when I add schema. And that's the purpose. So FAQ schema, the purpose of FAQ schema is to mark up existing questions and answers on your web page. So do not add FAQ schema to your schema file if you do not have the actual questions and answers in the actual content on the actual web page. I hope it makes sense. 
and also with regards to product schema. So uh, product schema is of course meant to be used for products. That's what Google writes in there in terms of service for, um, or that's what it, that's what the Google is has intended product schema to be used for. And uh, so, uh, I mean, it's it's up to you. I include it sometimes because I know I, that I get the stars, the aggregate rating stars, you know, the orange stars below the search results, and it can be it can lead to increased positive click through rate. So more people will be inclined to click on your search results if you actually include these this product schema. But uh, I mean, it's up to you. If the web page is not describing an actual physical product, then um, yeah, then just know that uh, it's probably against Google Google's guidelines to use product schema if it's not a, an actual physical product. Although, in my opinion, it can be. I mean, if you have a service uh, that can be thought of as a product, you, you know, I, I could still defend to use the product schema. But uh, yeah, just so you know, use this wisely and uh, just uh, use your brain and use your experience so that you are not trying to spam because the purpose of schema files is not to spam and trick Google, it's to help Google understand better what your web page is about. And not only Google actually, because I know that the large language models, you know, OpenAI and Llama and Facebook and all the others, these are the guys that scrape your web, our websites. I know, we know that they also use structured data in the form of schema files to better understand what your website is about. So you're helping yourself, you're helping Google, you're helping Bing, Yahoo, and you're helping all of the other, you know, open AI and all of the other uh, tech companies uh, to understand what your, what your content is about and what your web pages are about. So yeah, uh, that was the update video for today and I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one.